Hi everyone, this is Angel with Tech Tutelage, and in this video I'm going to show you how to install PuTTY. The first thing you want to do is open your web browser and search for PuTTY. Then you can go ahead and click on putty.org link and here you can click on this download link. Then you'll be presented with all the download options and in my case I'm going to choose the 64-bit once you have the MSI file downloaded, you can go ahead and click on open file. Then you can go ahead and click next. You can select your destination folder. I will keep that as default. Then here I'm going to click on this drop down because I want to have a shortcut on my desktop. Then here you can click on yes. And here I'm going to turn this off because I don't want to have the readme file open. But if you want to do that, you can just leave the check mark on and then you can go ahead and click finish to have the installation completed. And I'm going to go ahead and close my browser. And as you can see, I have a shortcut here for putty. I'm going to click on it to open it. And you can see this is what putty looks like. So the first thing that you're probably going to want to do is set up your default settings. Now there is a lot of things that you can set up, but I'm just going to go to the main things that I like to set up as my defaults. So the first thing is I'm going to go down and set up some settings in this window option. Now here, this is the size of your window that every time you open it, how big your window is going to be. I usually like to set this to 100 and here I'll set it to 35. If you want, you can make some changes here. This is the history that your window will keep. I'll keep it at 2000 because that's a pretty good number. But in case if you're going to be opening some very large log files or something like this, that it requires lots and lots of lines, you can come here and change this number. It's just a nice thing to know. Then I'm going to go down to appearance. Here in appearance, you can change what your cursor appearance is, but I'm going to leave it as a block. But the most important thing that I'm looking for here is the font size. 10 points is pretty small for me. So I'm going to go ahead and set it up on 16 again you can change it to whatever fits you best click ok and the next thing that i like to do is the colors by default it comes with a black background and some kind of a grayish font i like to have it black and green so i'm going to come here and foreground is what i want to change and if you know the rgb values you can go ahead and just type them in in my case i'm going to click on modify because i don't know them and i'm going to just select the green i like and once you have all that selected you can go back to session click on default settings click save and that will save the settings to your defaults so the next time when you open and try to connect it will use this setting so now the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and save another session with my server's IP. That way I don't have to type it every time. So I'm going to come here, enter the IP for my server. And here I'm going to give a name to that session. So that's my Red Hat server. So I'll call it RHEL and I'm going to click save. Now that I have it here, every time I open PuTTY, I can just double click on it and connect. Let's give it a try. There you go. The first time you connect your new server, you'll be prompted to accept the fingerprint of that server. I'm going to go ahead and click accept. And now I can go ahead and log in as my root user. And there you go. I'm on my server using PuTTY. And now I can do all the fun stuff that one can do on a server. Now that you saw how to use PuTTY to connect your remote server by using username and password, I want to show you how to use PuTTY to connect your remote server by using a key pair. I don't have a key pair here, but I'm going to show you how to create one with a tool that comes with a PuTTY installation. So if you come here and click on start, you're going to see the tool called PuTTY Gen got installed. Let's go ahead and open that. With a PuTTY key gen creator, we can create a private and public key pair. So you can go ahead and click click generate and then start moving your mouse to generate some randomness and that will create your keys. Once you have your public private key pair created, you can go ahead and save your private key. It's going to ask you if you sure you want to do it without a passphrase. In my case, I don't care about passphrase since this is just demonstration. But if you want, you can enter passphrase here. I'm going to click yes. And then I'm going to save that on my desktop so it's easy to access. And I will call it putty private key. And I'll go ahead and save it. Now that I have this saved, here's where you get your public key. So if you read here, it says public key for pasting into open SSH authorized keys file. So this is what I need to put on my server in order to be able to connect. So you can grab it from here and I'm going to go ahead and put it up to my server. So I'm going to go to my .ssh directory. And I need to put this in authorized keys file, which I don't have at this point. So I'm going to have to create one. 
and I like to use VI when I work with keys. And the next thing you want to do here is change the permissions on that file and you want to make it so it's 600. So I'm going to do mod 600 to my authorized keys file. There you go. So now that we have this done, I'm going to go ahead and start new session with my putty. And to do that, you can just click up here on this bar and say new session and that will open putty and here now I can load my red hat settings and I can add my private key here so we can click down on SSH then on auth and then in browse you can go ahead and add the key from my desktop. I'm gonna click on open and because I want this key to always be there I'm gonna go scroll up here session and make sure I click on the save button that way next time I open it my connection will remember where my key is located then I'm gonna go ahead and click open and now if I type my root user it will connect to the server without asking for a password there you go as you can see now I can connect to the server without having to enter the password and we made a putty to use my private key now one important thing to know is that this key is special for putty only and so if you have a different type of key like something that was for example created with OpenSSL that key would not work with putty you're gonna have to convert it the next thing I'm gonna show you is how to convert a key made with OpenSSL so it works with putty to do that I'm gonna start my PowerShell then I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm going to run the command called SSH keygen. Then I'm going to give my key a name. I'm going to call it PS key so I know that it's key made from the PowerShell. And I'll hit enter. I'm going to skip the passphrase again. And as you can see down here now I have a private key and a public key. Now I'm going to go ahead and open my public key. And I'll open this with just my notepad. And I'm gonna get the content of it. And always when you get the content of the keys, make sure you don't miss anything. Then I'm gonna go back to the server. I'm gonna open my authorized keys file again. And I'm gonna add this key. Then I'm gonna exit, save. Now I have the key here. Now let's go ahead and try to connect with Putty. But this time we're gonna use the private key that we created with PowerShell. So I'm gonna go ahead, start a new session. I'm going to go load my Red Hat session and but now I'm going to go here and change my authorized key and as you can see the new key is not showing here and that's because it's not PPK key. Anyway I'm going to just open all files and I'll try to connect to it just to show to you that it's not going to work. I'm going to go ahead and select the key, I'm going to click open, if I try to connect and I say root it's going to ask me for the password and here's going to tell me unable to use key file. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to use again that tool here that is called Putty Gen, right? So I'm going to open it and you can click here on conversions and then you can click on import key and then you can select that key. And once you have the key imported, you can go ahead and save it as a Putty format key. And we can give it a name. I'm going to call it PS Putty Key. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and save and we can see it down here. So now I'm going to close this. Then I'm going to go ahead and start another new session. I'm going to load my Red Hat profile and then I'm going to go down to SSH auth and I'm going to change the key and I'm going to point it to this new PS putty key. I'm going to click on open and now if I try to connect that should work. I'm going to enter root and there you go I connected with the key that we created with PowerShell that we converted with the putty key gen. So that's pretty much it. That's the basic of how you use Putty. I hope this video was informative to you. If you liked it, please click on the like button. And if you want to see more of my videos, please subscribe for my channel. Thanks for watching.